Number seven, integration by parts, five marks. Nice and easy, except you notice, oh, they've got an X squared. That means you're gonna to have to go through the process twice because the way you work out the integration by parts is you're wanting one of them to whittle away and to whittle away at the X, I'll have to go through it twice. But the first bit is you've got to decide. Now, since it's just a rearrangement of the product rule, I've got which one am I going to integrate and which one am I going to differentiate? Well, the differentiating is the whittling away, so I'm going to differentiate this one and integrate that one. And that's all you really need to state. There's no point in putting all this stuff down at the side of I'll choose you as this and V as this and integrate that and differentiate that and so on. The pattern's quite clear and straightforward. It's a rearrangement of the product rule. So what we've got here is then you differentiate this, you integrate this, integrate first. So I'm going to leave that eight x squared, but integrate this. Now, sine would have come from cos, but unfortunately, it would be a negative cos that produced that. So it's going to be negative cos of 4x. It's not just a function of x, it's a function of a linear expression, 4x. So then divide by the, deri the inner derivative, so it's negative a quarter x. Minus the integral of, now I've carried out the differentiation, the integration rather, so now I differentiate. So that goes down to 16x. And I've already done this one, so it's left alone. So that's a quarter of cos 4x dx. That's the first part. I thought that'd be worth two out of the five marks for establishing that pattern. Decide which one you're going to differentiate. Decide which one you're going to integrate. And here, of course, you want that to disappear, so I'm differentiating this one. And then you integrate first. This part's an integral. Differentiate that, make it smaller. I've still, of course, got this integral to do. This part here, I'll tidy up a bit because 4 is going to go into 8 twice. So I've got negative 2x squared cos 4x, and it can just wait. I can tidy this bit up as well because I can take that 4 out. 4 into 16 goes 4. That can come out, and there's a negative. So I've got plus 4 times the integral of whatever's left there, x cos 4x dx. And then it's just go again. So again, one more whittle will do it, differentiate that and integrate that part. So this just has to wait and see what happens with the rest. This is just a spectator now, waiting to see what I get for this part. Now it's going to be four of all of this. So four of whatever that produces. Right, I'm doing an integration. You integrate first, so integrate that part. The x weights while I integrate cos. That's easier this time because sine produces a positive cos, but it is a function of 4x, so divide by 4, minus the integral of, now differentiate this one, that goes down to 1, leave that one alone, a quarter of sine 4x dx. Then I'll just do another little tidy up now, so this is just sitting, waiting here, it's getting bored, but just keep refreshing it and it won't disappear. This part, four times that, well that'll disappear nicely, just leaving you x times, what was that, sorry, more, sine 4x. Then for this part I've got, four will disappear, but I've got negative, so it's minus the integral of, and it'll just be sine 4x dx, almost there. I've got negative 2x squared cos 4x plus x sine 4x. Sine will go back to cos. Cos would have produced a negative sign, and I've got a negative there. So plus cos 4x, but divide by the derivative, so plus a quarter of that, and then plus c. Which we do for the answer, unless I wanted to gather up the terms a bit, because I could have a separate sine term and cos term. Cos term. So I could say for this, I've got this, depending which one I want to put first. Maybe I'll put that first. So I've got x lots of sine 4x, and how many lots of cos 4x is there? And I've got plus 1 quarter minus 2x squared lots of cos 4x plus c. But that last part's optional. And that was it. Just remembering, of course, the pattern then for that. You've got to choose which you do, do you differentiate, which do you integrate. Then out of the two, you integrate first. It's an integral you're doing. You integrate first, leaving that one alone. And then that, having had its turn, is left alone. And the other one gets its shot to do what it was going to do, which is differentiate. And since it needed to go again, you did the same again. Which will it differentiate? Which will integrate? Obviously, x will disappear. Then... It's an integration, integrate first. 
So you leave that alone just now and integrate that one. And then that, having been integrated, just carries forward. And now it can get its differentiation. And then the final integration takes you to the answer.